Hello Canucks fans. Whoa, that's loud. And welcome back to another episode of Canucks Conversation brought to you as always by the Toyota BZ4X, the 2023 Toyota BZ4X. The BZ4X is Toyota's brand new all-electric SUV that is designed to go the distance for you and your family. The BZ4X is packed with Toyota's coolest tech, but it still has that trusty SUV feel you know and love. And even though it's electric, it's capable of effortlessly conquering any terrain, whether it's rain, snow, mud, or your friend's questionable post-game recaps. The BZ4X will get you through it all. And as always, we're coming to you from the iconic Wall Center in downtown Vancouver. Looking for your next meeting space? Contact the Wall Center for all your event needs at sales at wallcenter.com. Calm. My name is Avery Jolly. That is Harm Dial. Our technical producer, the man at the controls, is Grady Sass. And Harm, yesterday's show was a bit anticlimactic. We wanted to have this big segment about the Norris race. And basically, what we determined was that there's really no race anymore. Quinn Hughes is by far the rightful Norris Trophy winner. We posted that on social media, and some Avs fans saw it. Hell, even some Canucks fans. And I'm sorry. Some casuals, I'll say it, some casuals, some absolute casuals, citing blocked shots as a reason why Kale McCarr should finish ahead of Hughes in the Norris voting. That, what a dumb effing stat is one comment we got. The stat being goals against, chances against. What are you arguing with here? Yeah, the responses yesterday were unhinged. And honestly, as soon as something starts going off on Instagram specifically, I'm sorry, but I don't take those comments seriously, to be totally honest, because Instagram comments, forget hockey takes. They're usually unhinged. Like, oh, I don't yeah. know how much, how often you're on yeah. IG, but they're some of the dumbest comment sections ever. Uh, YouTube is hit or miss, depending on what channel. I just want to say, just in case he's watching, there was a guy, I don't remember your screen name. I don't even apologize for that, because this guy, when Faber and I first started the Canucks Army YouTube channel, which like, probably two, three years ago, we started it and just started from scratch. We had zero subscribers. And this guy was like, 300 views. You guys should give up. You're laughably bad. Uh, 100 subscribers. Now the channel's obviously grown quite a bit. Haven't heard from that guy in a while. But it was really, really funny that we had a hater really early on who obviously didn't know what CanucksArmy.com was. Thought we were just two dudes just doing this for fun, starting it up out of out of nothing. But uh, yeah, it was it, it was a really fun experience to see those kind of comments and then just see them go away. Didn't see them anymore. Yeah, I'll also say this. I doubt anybody that is arguing Makar for Norris has watched Quinn Hughes more than three times a season. That's a very, very fair take. And you know what was interesting was all the people that were coming in and saying, kind of agreeing with us and saying, even Craig Button was one of these people who said, I don't even think Makar is second place. In the Norris race. And I I don't know if I'm willing to go that far, but like the names you and I were talking about before we went to air was Roman Yossi and Victor Hedman. I think you can make a stronger case for Roman Yossi than you can Hedman. Like, I think you might want to go Hughes, Yossi, Makar, Hedman is like yeah. your top four. And then I'll throw one to Evan Bouchard. He's he's had a solid season. Uh had someone, an Oilers fan, I'm assuming, say no, actually, you guys are both wrong. Evan Bouchard's the first place Norris winner. And I said this to all my all my friends out in Edmonton, all my all my colleagues over at Oilers Nation, that I heard the discourse about Evan Bouchard at the start of the season. You can't win a Norris trophy if people were wondering aloud if you should be like the third pairing defenseman. Yeah, you should also it's a requirement, it should be a requirement to, you know, play defense once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. There's that too. This he's is a, like and don't get me wrong, he's he's improved, but he was walked so many times yes. defensively. And he's also really benefited from playing with Matias Ekholm. Like, this is like yeah. talking about Philip Horonic for the Norris Trophy this year. Not quite, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Big show today. Big show. Oh, yeah. Jeez, we told him we'd bring him on at 2.05. We started a little late. My apologies. Let's get to him now. Uh, Patrick Johnson joins us now, and he's brought to you by our friends over at Four Winds Brewing. If you like the Four Winds light lager but are looking for something with a bit more weight behind it, you should check out the Four Winds Huffed Gold Pilsner. Brewed as an homage to great German pills that came before it, Huffed Gold is crisp and clean with a nice little European hop zip to round it all out. I like that. You can ask for Huff Gold anywhere you find Four Winds products, and it's also available online at fourwindsbrewing.ca for delivery anywhere in BC. All right, he joins us now. 
He is the PHWA chapter chair. He plays a very vital role in our fantasy baseball league, and he joins us. Hi, guys. Hi, Patrick. Live from, the, live from the streets. Live from the streets? You are on the street. It's PJ on the street, and I like it. I like it. Uh, PJ, the Masterton votes, or not votes, but Masterton nominees came out. The Vancouver chair, we selected yeah. Noah yeah. Juleson. Uh, tell us about the Masterton, what it means, and why we went with Noah Juleson. Sportsmanship, sportsmanship, dedication to hockey, perseverance. Um, those are sort of the three main items been handing out since 1968. A lot of people asking, why not Brock Besser? I'm like, well, we nominated him last year. Um, but in general, it's, it's an award that's not meant to be a comeback player of the year award, but it often seems to end up being like that. Um, but it's just meant to sort of recognize the guy that's, I guess, worked the hardest, done the best to sort of be the guy that people want him to be that year to be what we want hockey players to be. And I think it's hard to argue that Noel Juleson isn't, hasn't been that guy this year. I mean, all we've all dealt with him top five, sort of top five guy in terms of just talking, some of the catch up with talk about the game, but also just the work he's put in. I think that's what, what stood out to most people, just the work he's put in this season, trying to become a full-time regular NHL defenseman. I mean, he was drafted nine years ago, uh, made his debut at the age of 20, but it's taken him six years really to be a regular full-time NHLer. And here we are. Yeah, and a devastating eye injury as well that threatened his career mixed in there. It's a phenomenal story for Juleson. Uh, Shifting gears to looking ahead to the playoffs a little bit, besides Pedersen, and I'll also exclude Demko and Lindholm from the conversation since they're a bit obvious as well, which Canuck player do you think is the biggest wild card or X factor for the Canucks in the playoffs in terms of we really need this guy playing at his best, and if he's at his best, that'll give us big boost in the first round i mean i think it's got to be dakota joshua isn't it? i mean it's the guy we've all been talking about um been interesting seeing him play with miller uh the last couple games him and garland i mean i personally i think you kind of actually gotta i think they should go back to besser with miller but i understand the idea what they're trying to go with there basically taking the two the, the two the two wingers who've been the most outside of Besser, i would say who've been the most consistent the most impactful this season and and putting them with a guy that's i think i mean really seems like always ready to play whether he thinks he's playing well or not it you know has that fire has that edge and i think joshua is an interesting player to put next to him because of his physical nature because of the way he's come to understand how he brings energy to the table um yeah i think it's dakota joshua PJ, six games left for the Canucks before the playoffs. What's the number one thing you're looking for over these final six games? Oh, I mean, <laughs> to steal the line from Rick Taka, getting inside. You know, I mean, this is a team that's been playing well defensively. On the year, has played well defensively. Fifth fewest goals against in the whole league. Uh, I wrote about this a little bit about this yesterday. It's about getting the puck into the good spots on offense. And you know, maybe maybe they never were. You know, there have been a lot of long bong shots all season, but you know, they were finding results on the inside. Maybe some of that was about luck. But I, I think on the whole, they need to find a way to get it's not just sort of fixing that power play. They have scored power play goals in three straight games, right? Like don't ignore that. Maybe ugly, but they've got it done. Uh, but to me, it's the five on five offense creating a little more. Uh, you know, I know they're kind of set in stone on what they're gonna be, but they still gotta find a way to get a little more, get on that doorstep, get a few more greasy goals. PJ, I remember having conversations with you earlier this season about the impact Rick Tockett has had, the buying mm-hmm. that he's been able to generate, and how despite Tockett and you know Travis Green are so similar and so close that they've had, had profoundly different impacts as, as head coaches here. When you examine big picture, the impact Tockett has had this season, particularly defensively and just getting a buy-in from this, this core group of players, what stands out to you about why he's been successful with this group? I think it's I think it's the idea of him being able to connect with the players, right? Like Travis Green was kind of a player's coach. He he tried to put himself as a guy who like was there to protect his guys, make um but on the whole, I think it's very clear to me that Tockett has just done a better job of that, right? Like he's just been better at connecting with his players, we hear so much about the vibe in the room. Noel Jolson, a great example of a person I talked to about this the other day. You know, he just said, you know, everyone's, everyone feels comfortable speaking their mind. They're all speaking the same language. I think they've been handed 
sort of communication tools by the coach that are more than just kind of the cliches. I used to think back to when we were covering the team with green and, you know, you, you'd go in the locker room after the game and you'd hear some talking points and you, you know that that's what Travis was going to talk about post game. And you knew that he had walked in and told the guys, this is the highlights of the game. This is what matters. And we know Tuck's approach is just a little bit different. He's more hands off. He's more sort of wants the players to come to him. But that's not a thing you can just make happen. You have you have to like actually like empower them. You have to give them ideas. You have to give them things to think about. And and I think Talkit has been so highly effective in that. He's well. He's studied a lot about communication. He and I have talked about that. I mean, I wrote a story about him um, uh, just after Christmas in, in January, just talking about the the way he communicates and the way he empowers players and the way he has a, a different approach with different players. He knows that he, you know, a guy like Nikita Zadorov, and Zadorov's talked about this, he wants to be barked at a little bit, right? There's other guys that are not going to react the same way. I mean, that's human nature. We think, let's think all back to the teachers that we liked and the teachers we appreciated. We're all going to have different takeaways, right? Like the way we responded in class or whatever it was, or the people that have mattered in our lives. The way there's certain people that fit for certain, for, for, for certain of us in different ways. And being, you know, the master coach, the master leader is the one who understands how to do all those different things in different ways. And he clearly has a, a perfect handle on all that. It, kind of in the same vein, we were talking about Quinn Hughes for the Norse, but what have you made of Quinn Hughes' evolution as a leader and the captain of this team? Well, I mean, he's a guy that in the end was always going to be about getting it done, you know, versus saying things. I mean, there obviously there was that chatter going back to last year when we first started perceiving Hughes trying to step up a little bit more in the wake of Bo Horvat's departure, being the guy that was going to speak up a bit more as an advocate, Um, you know, and he's been effective at that. And I I think more than anything, the way he's been able to take the game on his sort of shoulders, the team on his shoulders, like look in Arizona, right? Like the Canucks weren't playing that great. They were playing well enough to win, but they still were struggling to create things in in front of the net. And he just said in the third period, said, you know, this is going to happen and I'm going to do it. In a way that we saw him do so often at the beginning of the season, I think he kind of took his foot off the gas a little bit, but we're coming down to crunch time and he knows it needs to get done and he's getting it done. He's being the guy. And I think that more than anything, you know, taking on, I am going to be this team's best player. I'm going to make it happen. You know, it doesn't matter if anybody else is. I'm going to do it. That, to me, is what stood out the most for him so far this season. Ian McIntyre reported earlier in the week on the intermission broadcast that he wouldn't be surprised if the Canucks get a deal or two done uh, with a pending UFA or two before right. the end of the regular season. He also added Dakota Joshua is near the top of their list. Uh, what are you hearing around these types of conversations? Yeah, I mean, I, I, the, the Heronic story has been a tough one to read. Um everyone playing very quiet on that. I mean, obviously like, you know, Ian got the the comment from him being, yeah, we'd love to do that. I mean, it was very similar to, to what I got from Rutherford a, a while back heading into the deadline, you know, that that was a factor in the, in, in sort of how they're all doing this. I think we, we well heard the sort of numbers, the positions everybody have. I haven't heard anything different. Um, you know, I, I Dakota Joshua to me, given how well he's played the, the, the potential value there. Like if you can get him, I mean, in the end we were worried about re-signing a fourth line forward. Well, he's not a fourth line forward anymore, right? Like he's become an, an essential middle six winger. And if you can get a guy that's going to have an impact on say your second line or can play with Miller, but you're able to pay him like he's a third liner, like that's pretty good money, man. Like that's a good way to go. I can see where they're going. The growth in the player has been real. Um, you know, there's a lot of things to see. Like he has matched a lot of the rate stats that we saw in sort of a cup of coffee in St. Louis before they signed him. You know, he was doing things in limited minutes and you can't do that. There's a lot of players, you know, it's not so simple as saying, you know, see good rate stats on a fourth line and say, oh, that guy should be playing on the second line. There's more to it than that. It's a risk. You go and take a gamble. That's they made a smart gamble on him, brought him in and it's worked out. And he has grown his game to the point where he's able to play you know, tough minutes. He played, he dominated. I mean, look at how strong the Bluger, Garland, um, uh, Joshua line was. Like, that was no mistake. It wasn't an accident. Those guys were effective in their minutes. Um, so, so the interest in re-signing them is obvious, and I think it's got to be a must-do, especially if you can get them on, you know, a, a number that keeps things low because that's how you build out the value in your team. We've talked about, you know, the old days. Look at Alex Burroughs. You know, numbers going around at home port and Alex Burroughs was. I've got a story going up this weekend about the impact he made on Sedin's. Like you've got to find those guys and 
clearly Dakota Joshua is in that realm right now. And again, a player that's just taken so many steps this year. Like, let's not forget that Joshua began the season kind of in Talkett's doghouse. Like, I think, what was it? The first day of camp, yeah. PJ, that Talkett no, was, was like, got, yeah, yeah, he's going to step it up. Yeah. 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 Like I was the guy that asked him, like he was one of those ones where you stick around. It was, a, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a, the first or second practice back from Victoria uh, at UBC and Joshua had skated with the minor leaguers. Like it was a clear statement. And I think Jeff and I were there and, and we asked him and Rick was blunt. He's like, he's got to pick it up. And Joshua said it more than once. It made a difference, right? Like he learned his lesson. He didn't take anything for granted. And, you know, he, I think, you know, I think there were a lot of things in there. I mean, I, I, su- I suspect that they weren't happy with say his off season test, the, the testing comes off season fitness, but like, you can see he's fit, right? Like we, we see him after games, after practice, and you can see this is a big, strong guy, you know, who, who really has had – and he's had an effective season. He's a big, strong guy. He's figured out how to do all that, and uh, it's, it's a huge credit to him. And, yeah, huge – I mean, like, Rick Talk is a massive fan of this guy. There's no doubt that he wants him to stay. Okay, something you've got to figure out. Our Fantasy Baseball League tragedy has oh, struck. No, We've got no controversy. I, I know you don't want to give your ruling, no but, like, how, how, how much of a toll has it taken on you to try to uphold this crazy Pablo Lopez trade? David, I would t- I just tell you, both of you guys, one day you guys might have kids. And, <laughs> uh, and you know, fantasy sports is an important outlet, but uh, you, you got to take every, every moment with a grain of salt. You got to take a deep breath and... That's that's my life advice on any on any controversial situation. Step back, take a deep breath. We'll figure it out. Figure it out quick. I want that trade vetoed. Okay, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Patrick. Thanks for joining us, man. We we really appreciate it. Take care, guys. There he is, Patrick Johnson. Uh, and yes, I did throw it into our fantasy baseball group chat that they should all be watching. And I tried, I tried for those of you watching from my fantasy baseball chat, all twenty of you. I did try to get PJ to give his ruling. There's this there's this big controversy in that league right now, and PJ's not the commissioner. PJ still is being asked to kind of uh, navigate it for us. So I was hoping he'd give his ruling on if the trade can stand or not okay. on the show, but he said he wouldn't. So this is why you uh, brought PJ on the That's show. That's exactly why. wedge fantasy baseball That's talk right. in yeah. on a Friday. That's right. That's I'm right. not letting you control guests again. <laughs> Our thanks to Patrick Johnson. That was a great interview. Uh, Really nice to have him on. Okay, Harm, we threw out this idea last week and we talked about potentially doing it. We were waiting for an off day. Canucks practice today in LA, but haven't really seen anything from that. And we kind of expected that. So we are doing our blind ranking Canucks segment. I will quickly explain this as thoroughly as possible. Basically, the blind ranking thing is this thing we've all seen on TikTok, Instagram now. And what you do is you have a different... Like So in our case, I'll literally use ours as an example. I'll explain how we're going to do this. We're going to have five skaters, and then we're going to do five goalies, okay? All-time Canucks, and we're going to rank them from one to five. The catch is that we don't know who's going to come next. That's why it's a blind ranking. So essentially, Grady and Jacob, our graphics guy, uh, has prepared a list of five skaters, five goalies, and what they're going to do, we're going to start with skaters, They'll flash up a name. We have to place them one to five, and then they're going to flash the next name, and we have to place that player where we have left. So again, if we saw all of them, we could easily do one to five. But since we're only seeing one at a time, we have to be careful. So like I would say the greatest Canuck of all time is Pavel Bury. If we get Pavel Bury first, I say, okay, no problem. I can put him number one. But if we get Trevor Linden first, okay, where do we want Trevor Linden? Do we put him two? What if the rest of the players that have been chosen by Grady and Jacob... What if Pavel Bury is not on that list? What if uh, one of the other all-time great Canucks isn't on that list and we're stuck with, I don't know, like we told them not to put like guys that didn't play a big role in the organization or anything like that. We told them not to put them on that list. But my point being, if Trevor Linden is supposed to be in the one spot, but we put him in two because we were like, okay, well, maybe Pavel Bury is coming. We're going to end up with like a final ranking that doesn't doesn't make sense. Exactly. Brendan Morrison is number one ahead of, Trevor Linden because Watch he's the it. last guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's get into it. Let's just do this. We don't know how this is going to go, but we're excited to do it. Grady, take it away. Tell us what we got to yeah, do. Yeah. Just give me a sec here. I'm just trying to figure this out. And um, while Grady does that in the YouTube live chat, the conversation right now is all about the Norris Trophy. Like we've got people talking about Evan Bouchard. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's a good chat right now in the YouTube live chat. And we thank everybody for tuning in on this sunny Friday afternoon. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good time right now. Okay, so we've got it. Okay, so 
You guys ready for this? I am. Oh, oh no peeking, no peeking. Yeah, don't peek. You, you kind of showed us something, but Did all I? I saw is helmets. You're okay. Okay. Your first player up is Marcus Nasland. So where are you putting him? Jeez, that's tough. Um, I would I would put Naslin too. Who's who, two. Okay, who? Well, hang on. Who's better than Naslin? Pavel Bray. Do you put Trevor Linden ahead of Marcus Naslin? No. Yeah, right. So I'm thinking Marcus Naslin. But what if you get like Quinn Hughes and the Sedins and? Ah, good point. Ooh. Okay, put put Naslin three. Put Naslin yeah, yeah, three? Three, three. 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 Final okay. call. Three. Yeah, final three. call. Okay. Marcus Naslin at okay. three. Oop. No cheating. No cheating. Okay. Your next player is Pavel Bray. Number one. Yeah, let's go Kay. one. Okay. Next up. Quinn Hughes. <laughs> well, number two. Yeah. Number two. two. Has to be. Okay. So there's two guys remaining. And honestly, <laughs> it's going to be Henry. By the Daniel. end of it. <laughs> yeah. By the end of it, Quinn Hughes might end up being. Absolutely. The greatest we have of all time. Exactly. Like, if he, like, so he's the greatest Canucks defenseman of all oh, time. That's already. easy. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see it, Grady. Who's number four? Daniel Sedin. Oh. <laughs> see, so this is the whole point of the fine ranking. All right, uh, number four. You're putting Daniel ahead of Henrik. Well, we didn't know Henrik was Well, next. we didn't know Henrik was <laughs> next. Oh, no. Well, Henrik's it, five. All right, well, Henrik's oh, five. Okay. So you got your list here. Okay, so to reiterate for those on the podcast, our list is Pavel Burry, Quinn Hughes, Marcus Naslin, Daniel, and Henrik. Harmon, how should this be changed like Pavel Bure stays at one, but it's probably Henrik Daniel two three. Yeah, yeah. And then Quinn Hughes, and then Marcus Naslund, or you have Marcus Naslund yeah. ahead of Quinn Hughes. Uh, I think that's fair. Uh, Quinn and then Naslund. Yeah, uh, probably. Probably. Okay, so we were a little bit off. Let's get to the goaltenders one. This is this was fun. I okay, like this. Give me one sec. I just got to do something here. So Someone wants we... us to do all-time shot blockers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. When I saw the blue helmets, I was like. It's going to be the Sedins. It's going yeah. to be. Yeah. But I didn't want to. And it's so, cheat, you know? it's so yeah. hard because I can't drag of the course, thing yeah, up yeah, without okay. actually seeing it. You so. did good. You did uh, good. Okay. Here. You set oh. up your screen and then you can share it. Whatever you want yeah, to do. Yeah. Just give me a second. And, and Jesse C is asking, what are we ranking on? Pure skill? I think you're ranking. Yeah, I don't want to tough. say contributions to the Canucks, but I think you have to take everything into account, right? Like how great was this person for the Canucks? I think. Yeah. In in Bray's case, it, it's just unfortunate because he was obviously hampered by injuries and, the, yeah. and obviously traded at some point. But again, but, when you take the whole equation into account, he's still the greatest Canuck yeah. of all time. Like my my dad will not hear anybody uh, oh, hear yeah. any other argument for he's uh, canceling his athletic subscription uh, if if we put then. him put him at a different spot. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday. <laughs> okay, we good, Grady? Yeah. Okay. okay. Your first goaltender is... Oh, where did this tab just go? Bear with me, folks. Oh, God, you can see it creeping I in. I can't really see it. You yeah, can't, see? Okay. can't see Okay. All right, first goalie up, Dan Cluche. Four? Yeah, let's go four. Oh, maybe five. Maybe five. Let's go I five. I don't want to use the five spot right yeah, away. It's fine. He wasn't that good. Okay, but what if, what if he's like, okay, Curtis Sanford? Yeah, but we have to take a gamble. Okay, they gave fine. Us all We're taking the gamble. Put him five. Put him skater. five. Put him five. Put, five. Okay. Put five. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're, we have to Next gamble. Up, John Garrett. <laughs> Hold on. I need to have a Love peek you, here. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close okay. your eyes. Okay. okay. We'll look away. Okay. Next up, Thatcher Demko. <laughs> uh, three, because I'm worried that Luongo and well, McLean will be Luongo on the list. Luongo will be on there. Uh, and McLean. Yeah, let's go three. Although, I, if you take yeah, the whole I'm, equation, we were about to throw the, isn't Demko better than McLean? You were about to throw that out there. I. This is the thing. That's why we're not rating just on through that era, so I can't, I no. don't have a leg to stand McLean's on. McLean's contributions to the team yeah. are far greater yes. than what Demko's yeah. done for the so far. Three, three, Grady. Okay. Next up. Kirk McLean. Two. Two. Okay, that was easy. Here comes Curtis Sanford. <laughs> <laughs> the King, Richard Broder. Four. I read a lot about him. Ah, this in... is too easy. And what's this? Longo's next? Yeah, of course. Number one. Yeah. 
we crushed it. That was awesome. So I See, I told it. you, Cloutier five. <laughs> Cloutier five yeah. is always a good bet. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have gone him first, but I was trying to like see what it was. No, that was good. Like, no, you, you did well. You did awesome. We that just, was a lot we're of fun. Too smart. We're just know? too smart. Uh, but I was just gonna say, and just another plug because he was on the show last week, and we let him plug his book. But I'm reading the book right now. Daniel Wagner's on the clock behind the scenes with the Vancouver Canucks at the NHL draft. You can order it on Amazon, find it wherever you get books. It's an awesome read so far. And I just wrapped up the chapter about the drafting the 1982 Canucks. I did not even know like Richard Berger came in in a trade and, you know, the Islanders who built through the draft obviously were an absolute wagon, a dynasty. They win four straight cups. The Canucks were a magical team in 82, but very few of those players, especially their impact players were actually drafted by the team. And I can't recommend Daniel's book enough. Really, really great read. And that's why I was able to put uh, Richard Berder at number four, pretty confidently there. Let's go. Yeah. The King. That the was King. fun. I that think was. we'll, we'll fine tune that a bit and then we can do things, you know, like top, we can go defensemen. We can go top five fighters, shot blockers, <laughs> shot blockers, <laughs> shut down centers, shut down centers. Yeah. Uh, okay. Nar in the chat. I feel a Luongo jersey retirement rant coming. No, not today. Not no. today, Nar. There's no need plenty for plenty of other shows and podcasts and videos where we can get plenty it. of time to do that. Uh, okay, let's let's get to oh, actually quick ad break. I got to tell you about a few of our sponsors. I'm excited to tell you about these sponsors because first of all, they pay us money, which is great, but also very passionate about this about a couple of these. So I'm going to tell you first about the Wendy's Daily Faceoff Survivor Pool game, which yes. I have won once this season, folks, and you're running out of time, so make sure you get on the game. The only thing sweeter than the taste of victory is starting your day with a new Cinnabon pull-apart from Wendy's. But there's no reason you can't have both because Wendy's and Daily Face-Off Survivor Pool are giving you a chance to win weekly prizes all season long. And hey, even if you make a few wrong picks, at least you know heading to Wendy's right now for a $5 Cinnabon pull-apart and small coffee is a great choice. Sign up for Daily Face-Off Survivor Pool today, sponsored by Wendy's. And the Wendy's app. Okay, this next one. I'm excited about this because it just dropped. I was part of the design. Harmon, you you were there too. And we talked to Wyatt. We talked to a whole bunch of people for this design. Canucks Army has got a playoff t-shirt, folks. And I'm so excited for it. I'm so excited that we're going to get some. We're going to be able to wear them. Uh, Pull it up here, Grady, because it's the shirt that says on it, we have an army, obviously an homage to our late friend, Jason Botchford. This is the shirt. You can see it there. What a beautiful shirt. And for those on the podcast, nationgear.ca is where you can go find it in green, gray, or blue. Uh, It's it's awesome. Then it says playoffs on the back too, and it looks really, really cool. I'm a big fan of this shirt, and I'm excited to wear it. I'm hoping to see a lot of Canucks fans wearing this shirt. See it all around town. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. The playoffs are near, and we have an army. Nation Gear is ready to gear you up for Vancouver's playoff run. Rep your favorite team as they battle for the cup. Shop the exclusive We Have an Army playoff tee and more at nationgear.ca. Please let me know if you haven't. Oh, whoops. <laughs> that's, a real, that's, a, that's a Ron Burgundy moment. <laughs> he will read anything. <laughs> go (laughs) oh that's a real ron burgundy moment that's awesome that's so funny okay so yes Harmon Harmon caught on but for those that didn't we got this in an email the ad read and it ended with please let me know if you have any questions and i copy and pasted that into my script so i started reading please let me know if you have any questions read whatever's on the teleprompter uh but yeah this shirt we have an army uh playoff shirt we are very very excited for it get get yours at nationgear.ca I'm going to slip in I hate baseball at the end of one of your ad reads. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Harm, we're going to hack the Google Doc before and we're just <laughs> yeah. going to write a bunch of oh, that's inappropriate so things. Funny. Shohei Otani was betting on baseball <laughs> yeah. games. Yeah. yeah. Baseball is the worst sport. My oh, God. man. That's great. That's so funny. I, I, I'm going to be honest. That's never happened to me. And when I was watching the movie Anchorman, I was always like, that, you, would, you, you think about what you're saying and that can't happen. But right there, it happened to me. You were just dialed in. You were focused. You were ready to rock. Yeah. B- by the way. Karen Versation in the chat. Do they make it in a women's extra small for oh, quads? Poor quads. <laughs> <laughs> I think they might. I, I, you know what? I, I saw this on the broadcast. I don't know if you caught this harm. Uh, two games ago, I think it was. They were giving Murph crap for buying a men's small shirt. And he, I don't know if he Who actually was. does that. He's Ray, ripped. John and Ray, uh, Shorty and Ray. 
They were like, oh yeah, Murph likes the men's small shirts. <laughs> Murph That's doesn't hilarious. wear a men's small. Although men's smalls do fit really nice on some of us. You mean youth XL quads? <laughs> okay, so funny story about that. In grade seven, I bought a, and remember, we did the longer growth chart. In grade seven, right. I was like 4'10". So we bought, I bought a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, ugly Christmas sweater. Yeah, you've worn that. Yeah, I've worn it on the show. I think, yeah. have I told this story before? It's a youth, it's a youth double XL. And it like, it fits me, but the arms are just short now. But like torso and everything, it still fits me. It was just big on me when it's I was gonna a hit kid. your curls, man. Well, uh, no, no, it fits me on. If uh, curls is all I do, that's, that's <laughs> the only place it doesn't fit me. Curls. Everywhere else, it, it's fine. But yeah, it was just really big on me when I bought it, and then I I grew into it. Noted leg day skipper quad. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I asked the chat what else we should do in terms of rankings. We got top five overhyped prospect, top five unsung heroes, top five biggest Jimbo draft butts. Hey, Grady, Bus. you know what? Let's do top five nicknames. Like, this doesn't seem like it's super hard for you to do. No. Why don't you do the top five? Do what? Pick one. Pick one, and you tell us what you're doing. Just spend anyone else while we read anyone else's. Spend your time making another tier list, and then just tell us what it is after you've made it. Don't tell us. Pick one from the chat, whatever you want. Okay. Pick a tier. Make it while we're doing anyone else. Uh, and that segues me our, perfectly. Our boy Jacob was responsible for doing that. I'm not too familiar with. Okay, it's okay. We'll we wait. might push this till next week. Okay. But, but we'll I wait. like your uh, your ambition. Okay, there. we'll wait. Uh, let's get to anyone else presented. But you want to do the anyone else read? Oh, I don't have the script in front of me. You can't okay. just. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You don't All remember right. it off by heart. Come on. Time for anyone else presented by DoorDash. I hate. Ba- hey, no. Oh. It's our listeners' <laughs> chance to get involved and hit us up in the YouTube live chat, and it's also our listeners' chance to get 25 percent off. And zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when they download the DoorDash app and enter the code NATION25. That's all capital letters NATION in the numbers 25. Offer valid in Canada. Subject to change. Terms do apply with Double Dash on DoorDash. You can order from multiple restaurants or stores in the same delivery without additional delivery fees so everyone can get what they want and need. All right. Let's see what we've got here in the YouTube live chat. A lot of blind ranking suggestions. Ah, oh, I love it. This is great. The just the Jimbo draft busts. I think draft busts of all time. Yeah, would be great. It's Ollie Levy. Like Ollie Levy's number one, right? Biggest draft bust. Got to be up there. Jake too. Vertan. Yeah. Ooh. But Jake, I think you go defenseman just because the position. Jake right? at least played NHL. Yeah, games. that's true. Yeah. 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 No, that's a good. Like point. Jake got a contract. Yeah, he'd be he'd be behind you, Levy. Yeah. Yeah. Your Levy's number one. I'd say. Yeah. yeah probably. You got Nick Jensen. I mean, you Jordan read the Schrader. you read Daniel's book. You should. Well, I'm still working. I'm still working through it. I'm only on chapter three. <laughs> I sh- yeah, it's interesting. It, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. I love this. Ty David, are you gonna have an Anchorman style brawl with the other Vancouver podcast? Yeah, you've seen Anchorman, yeah. right? Yeah, you know when they fight the other yeah. dude. Yeah, that'd be great. Which show do you think we have the best chance against in a brawl? Oh, other Vancouver show. The producer get to be involved. Yeah, we'll take you in. Yeah, yeah, you you count. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So like well, we definitely could that. beat up Matt and Blake without. A oh, doubt. Matt's six five. Yeah, or you six just, six. You just gotta low bridge him. I guess that's true. We just could make him tumble. I do a mean tabletop. People don't see me, and I just go right behind their legs and crouch down. And you, Harmon, could push them. Yeah. Sorry, Matt. I don't know though. Like, I don't. Yeah. Bruff is really tall. So I don't well, know you're also that. their producer. So what are you doing? Oh, this? oh yeah. Good point. Punching yourself? <laughs> I'll have to turn. I'll have to go heel mode on one of you guys. Yeah. I like our chances. I think we treat you really well. Yeah. <laughs> you know where my heart lies, quads. Yeah. So Matt and Blake, J Pat's alone. Well, J Pat has all those hosts. One yeah. of which is me and Harm. Be tagging them in. Yeah. J Pat, J Pat's no slouch. Alfred and Bruff, they've got two producers. Yeah. I don't like our chances there. Yeah. Donnie, Donnie and Dolly are they got older, the old but, man wisdom. But, we can just pretend we're agents. Or Donnie, something. Donnie grew up in North Burnaby. He's seen yeah. the mean streets. I don't. I mean, I I have that same advantage. But North Burnaby was different when Donnie was a kid than when I was. Shocker. Harm versus Drance. The analytical battle. Yeah, one. You could take Drance. I mean, I don't want to comment. <laughs> uh, we get Wyatt too, yeah. right? More a special guest referee, perhaps. Yeah an interesting one this is an interesting conversation to have because we're starting to include guests i, I think yeah. our I, so i'm in the middle of a bulk 
in the gym. So like, give me three nice. more months, and nice. we'll be Ooh. we'll we'll be good. Now I'm thinking Sat. He's pretty ripped. Yeah, I I don't nobody's think taking Sat. sat. Oh, I could take Richo maybe. Like I yeah, think Richo is probably versus Italian. Yeah, Richo is probably my most <laughs> even matchup in the market. Uh, who else? I'm stalling. I can't think of. No offense, I can't think of many other shows. Yeah, because you get like afternoon shows, like yeah. No, no offense, the to them, Jeff like, Merrick show. <laughs> Bic, we can take Jeff Merrick. Bic's a great guy. Shout out, Bic. Actually, you know what? You know, what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you something about Jeff Merrick. I don't know him at all. I've never met Jeff Merrick in my life. He's don't clip nice this. Yeah, I, he seems seems <laughs> don't great. Don't say anything mean. I'm not gonna say anything mean. I just think just looking at Jeff Merrick that like he secretly does like Taekwondo or something, and I'm coming out here being like, oh, I think I could take Jeff oh, Merrick. Dude. And he then used he'd to be work like in a graveyard. A be not, careful. It's like Scott Rintoul. Like Scott Rintoul oh, is a huge ripped. fitness guy, right? Yeah, he's a runner. Like I can see Jeff Merrick secretly being like, oh yeah, I'm also a black belt in like jujitsu. He also has a bunch of people who were surprised in the summer when photos came out and he has like a whole sleeve of tattoos. Yeah. There you go. See? He, yeah. I don't think you want to mess with the guy no, that's, like what that. I, that's what I'm saying is I get the vibe that he's like a sneaky, sneaky tough guy. He was an undertaker once upon a time before he got into the industry. So, wow. You never know. He might have some some dark evil energy. In Every him. time you hear a gong, Jeff Merrick's coming. Oh. No right. Paul Bear. Oh, that was Paul Bear. I was like, what the hell are you doing? Oh, okay. okay, that's enough. enough of that. That's enough. Ollie's got the dog in him. Wow, people are really re yeah. resonating well in the <laughs> conversation. They're all getting into it. Yeah, Captain Canucks kind of right about this. I'd I'd say Matt could solo Harmon quads. Like, you're taller than me, obviously, but like Matt could one hand on each of us, I'd say. But the mm. tabletop, we have that going for us, right? Yeah. Like, we want me on the other side, you on one we, side. We also have way better cardio. Yeah, that's true. Speak that for matters. yourself. Don't you remember me getting out of breath okay. when I did the gritty? I have really good cardio. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I played basketball. Dolly's with my got that at crown Easter. in him. I was gassed, like, very, very minimal exercise. And I was just gassed, anyways. Not a banner day for me on Easter. Although so, I did shoot some threes. Splash Brother quads. Rain regs kind of count mm, more national. See, this is where. But where do you draw the line? Because like guys like you know Wagner, for example, Kuzma, they're not really. Well, they're not on shows. We don't have to compete right. with them. But right. this is where we really miss Chris. Chris yeah. Favor, right? Is like, yeah, we can replace prospect coverage. We replaced him as the co-host. But man, like if we had Favor right now, <laughs> no offense, harm. Yeah, no. Like, Every... who could we not take? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We once had a Patreon idea, and longtime listeners of the show will know this story, but we once had a Patreon idea where someone said, if we can get like a thousand bucks a month on the Patreon, will you box with Chris? Oh. And I was like, no. And then Chris was like, okay, how about I'm blindfolded and I only have my left hand? I and at remember the time, this. Yeah. I was like, oh, I don't know. Now I think I can handle that. Like, I think I could take him if he just had his left hand and he was blindfolded. Like, I think I could, I could, I could hang in there. But that was the blindfolded, thing. yeah. That's the key that was part. The thing, but if he's swinging and he catches you in the right spot, right? I'm going down. So interesting conversation. But yeah, we had Jesse C bring up favor. So Someone brought up Canucks it. Clay. He's way too nice. No, to get Canuck involved. Clay. We could all take Canuck Clay. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> no, there's man. another guy. There's another guy who I bet Canuck Clay is going to see this and be like, actually, I've done kickboxing for the past 45 years. Well, that's the thing is. Well, he's not that old. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Obviously, um, strength size matters. Yeah. But if you Speed do jujitsu, for example, you'll see plenty of examples of, of, of guys that, let's say, are, are massive, start jujitsu and get whooped by guys that are like half their yeah, size. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Karen Versation, who clearly knows the old stories we've used to tell. Faber's knees are a huge liability. <laughs> Just move. Yeah, they know the story about Faber's knees. I think we, we were talking about the... He braced up. He had to brace up for our round of golf. He was talking about that on the show about a year ago. But anyways, this is, I can't believe this is the is only this... anyone else we've gotten into. No, no, we got one. We got one from, uh, I can't quite say this name, but are we going to see Lindholm play for the Canucks again? That's a actually really good question. I've started to wonder about it myself. I'm going to say yes. Yeah. If you're skating and his wrist is taped up, like they know what's going on. It's too late to LTIR him and get that benefit, but I think he plays in the playoffs. I don't know, to be honest. I 
certainly hope he's ready by the playoffs, but you also have to keep in mind from the player's perspective, you're playing for your next contract. Mm -hmm. You don't want to end up in a situation where you're playing hurt, you have a disappointing playoff run, and now all of a sudden it affects what your next payday could look like. Because Whereas if you are legitimately hurt and it's hampering you from an agent's perspective, right? Let's say I'm his agent. I'm sitting, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, if you're severely limited and you're unlikely to produce a lot in the playoffs, then maybe you don't play. And hmm. then even when it comes to, oh, he had a disappointing stretch in the regular season, it's the, the case I can make to teams is, well, he was hurt. Yes. Right? And yeah, sure, you could technically make the same case for for the playoffs where you could tell teams, oh yeah, he was hurt in that time. But it sounds a lot more convincing if you don't suit up for the playoffs. Absolutely. And you you are just limiting the sample size even more of, okay, this was a down season for him. And you can also, like you can attribute, can you attribute this whole season and be like, oh, he's playing through it. He's playing through a hand. And we don't know that's the case, but potentially if that's what comes out of it, you might be able to make that case. And but again, even that's then, one like, that will resonate with teams. It, it, if he if his season were to end now, mm -hmm. right, it would be essentially a nine point nine points in twenty two game stretch in Vancouver where he, he was quote unquote a disappointment, and even that had to sound brutal. Like oh, that it wasn't a fit. Like it's yeah, exactly it wasn't a fit. Especially, especially if you're like, well, he was trying to play through the injury towards the last several games of those. Look at his wingers at down. times. Uh, whereas again, if you come back for the playoffs, you have a rough playoff run. Even mm -hmm. if you try and make the case of, oh, he was playing hurt, um, teams will be like, well, he was still healthy enough to appear. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, all of that is to say, I, I don't know. And the team hasn't given a lot of clarity or, or concrete updates the way we have with, let's say, Demko, where we're very confident that he's going to be ready in advance of the playoffs. We've got a few responses to this. Uh, this one from Karen Versation. If he's hurt enough that he needs to be shut down, he should have had surgery by now. That's just kind of what I keep thinking about is, and again, it's not always, that's not always the case, right? Like sometimes guys will see if they can play through something and then they'll just be like, well, rather than getting surgery right now, like, let me see how this is in four weeks and then I'll get surgery in the off season. And then I'll do it at that point, especially if you know the, Recovery time isn't going to really hamper your next season too much, but it's an interesting thought. It's an interesting thought that if he needed surgery, he would have had it by now. But usually you try other treatment options before. Yeah, and you just think about, like, there's a reason at end of season media availability, it's like, okay, these seven players are going to have off-season surgery, right? Like, that happens for basically every team. Even Ilya Mikheyev, how long did he play through his yeah. ACL before, before reaching a certain point where he was like, you know what? I can't continue to keep playing through And this. how much he longer surgery. would he have played if the Canucks weren't, like, their season wasn't over by mid-November? I know, yeah. Something to think about. Uh, okay, this one, follow-up on the Lindholm question. Would now be a good time to buy low on him for a one- to two-year contract? That's the thing. Agents aren't taking that. Like, agents, again, and let's not even say one to two years because that's not happening, but agents aren't going to... Right now, they're in a position of weakness. You always have a stronger hand on free agency day because there are going to be teams that are looking for a center in free agency or trade that are going to miss out on that center that they want. So who is who is Elias Lindholm plan B for? Probably a lot of teams that want to make a splash, that want to increase their center depth by any means necessary. The cap's going up. This might be a different free agency period than one we've seen before. There's no such thing right now, I don't think, as buying low on Elias Lindholm. And if you're Elias Lindholm or the agent, why are you signing that, especially to keep, stay in Vancouver, where it just hasn't been a fit just yet? He's also 29 years old. Now is the time to sign the deal that sets you up for the rest of your career, the rest of your life. You don't want to end up in a John Klingberg-like situation, right? Where Klingberg, Klingberg a couple off-seasons ago, was 29, 30. Uh, he... I mean, this was by necessity because he overestimated his market, but he ultimately signed a one-year deal with Anaheim and fell off precipitously, um, wasn't the same player, and now he never really got that bag, Yeah, right? 
Yeah, ex- exactly. Uh, conversation again on S and P. Sarah Volley said he's torn about his Norris vote. For him, it's between Hughes and Makar. He thinks it could be one of the closest Norris votes we've ever seen. First of all, I need to know how long ago he said that because if it was this past week, we've got a conversation to have. It was literally a few hours ago. We've got to talk to Frank then because he's wrong. So we'll talk to him next Wednesday. He'll be on the show. We'll talk to him about it. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, and Jesse C bringing this up about Lindholm as well, that he was on one of the best lines of all time just a couple of years ago, and teams are going to look at that. Like, teams are going to look at that. Hell, the Canucks looked at that. Like, the Canucks looked at that as well, right? So, Lindholm's going to get his bag in free agency. Maybe it's not going to be that 8 by 8 but again, that included living in Calgary. So, that's the other thing. If you're going to get, you know, some a little bit less money, but you're going to be playing somewhere else, you might want to take it if you're Elias Lindholm. So again, we'll see uh, what he gets in free agency. It'll be interesting to see if he even returns uh, down the stretch. And I shouldn't even see down the stretch. There's six games left in the season. I don't know if he's going to play a regular season game. At this point, I would be surprised if he's shut down for the playoffs. Like, I think he'll play in the playoffs. Yeah, I'm still hopeful that he's going to appear in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and Ty David saying the underlying stats when Lindholm's on the ice have been positive. Yeah, we know his defensive impact has been good. He's won face-offs. He, he, he hasn't been bad in Vancouver it's just similar to what the Canucks expected to get from him they weren't trying to trade for Jay Beagle right like they weren't trying to trade for a guy whose defensive metrics okay and yeah it's not Jay Beagle he's not Jay Beagle but you know what I'm saying yeah yeah you get what I'm saying a bottom six forward that's not what they traded for you don't give up first round pick for that um so again relative to expectations Lindholm yes has been a bit of a disappointment in Vancouver has he been god awful get him out of the lineup absolutely not yeah, of course. Plus, again, if he comes back, all that matters is his playoff playoff performance, right? What yeah. he did post deadline, post deadline to the end of the regular season isn't gonna matter. Yeah. What the hell? Okay, people are saying stuff about Frank. We gotta <laughs> we gotta talk to Frank. Okay. Uh Jesse C, how much input does Ian Clark have on the decision to spend on a backup next year versus promote Seelovs? Uh a lot. A lot. Yeah, a lot. And, and like, that's not a bad thing or like, oh, Ian Clark's demanding this. It's just like Rick Tockett and Ian Clark, by all indications, have gotten along well. That's something I wondered about was, look, like we know the Canucks have signed Ian Clark to a five-year deal that matched Thatcher Demko's contract. And that's a lot for a goalie coach, right? You wonder when there's coaching changes. And this is just his, historically in the NHL, we've seen coaches come in and want to get their guys in, Right. Hell, we've seen it with this management team, how much they like guys in Pittsburgh. Who's the goalie coach in Pittsburgh during the cup winning years? I'm sure they'd like to get that guy in, but all indications are that Ian Clark has meshed well with this management group uh, and with this coaching staff. That's all I've heard so far. And again, there's been no, from at least from what I know, there's been no controversy or disagreements. And again, Rick Talkie even says when he's talking about goalie, goaltending decisions, he's like, yeah, I got to talk to Clarkie, but we'll figure it out. Like, Coaches, the coach in Vancouver right now isn't overriding the goalie coach on who should start games. They're working on it collaboratively, uh, and that doesn't happen everywhere. That does not happen everywhere, but it has happened. Uh, happened with Travis. Happened with Bruce. Yeah, happened with Bruce, and then it uh, it also is happening with Taki from all indications. So, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting question, but yeah, kind of segues into the next one, which is who starts tomorrow. Against the LA Kings is Archer Seelovs is Casey DeSmith. I don't know. I said Seelovs earlier. I think the nature of the chances that LA takes, Casey DeSmith might be. Well, I don't want to say just no. Nah, I don't know. But, yeah, I don't not know. not good at rebounds, right? LA likes to they get to the net up and bury those. those chances. I'm gonna so. say I'm gonna say Archer Seelovs. I'm gonna say Archer Seelovs is a good good start for tomorrow. He's also just been playing well. It's just about rewarding him. It's not about. DeSmith hasn't done this well. DeSmith hasn't done that well. It's just that Seelovs has stopped the puck really well. And I'm going with Seelovs. Yeah, and it's not about give Seelovs both games, like the Saturday and the Monday, yeah. and it's his net now. Uh, regardless of who starts Saturday, I I think they should alternate the next two games. Yeah, I think that's a great way. I think, again, you got six games left, three for Seelovs, three for DeSmith. I think that's a fine way to look Obviously at until it. Demko comes back. Yeah, of course. I hope he gets those starts. I, he should get those starts. I, have we seen anything from practice, Grady? Um, any updates from anyone that's there? Mm, no, but I'll have a look and I'll get back to you. All right. I don't even know if there are any reporters on the on this uh, last regular, regular well, sometimes season Sometimes Kate tweets stuff. 
you know, like sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Kate did not tweet anything, which is fine. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't look like we have any. Uh, <clears throat> we doesn't. We don't have any updates from practice. But we'll be on the road in the playoffs. So at least you'll be there for sure, and we might be there as well. And it'll be a good, uh, good time during the playoffs. Interesting. No direct flights to Nashville. You tell me. Yeah. That's crazy. All right. <clears throat> Is there direct flights from like Seattle though? Like, I guess that's a four, th- three, four hour drive to yeah, Seattle. So either not... way, it's a full yeah. travel day, basically. Yeah, that's crazy. All right. Uh, Ty David, is it possible the Norris vote could end in a tie? I don't think so. That's a question for Frank. I don't think it's possible that we end in a tie. I don't know. I'm I don't not think sure. it's sure. No, it might be mathematically possible. I don't know. I I don't know. We will see. Because it's we a weighted see. system per place. Yes, right? it is. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. So yeah, like first place is a uh, is worth five points, I think, and then second place is four. That kind of thing. We need or no, the tiebreaker. Second place is three points. I don't know the exact um yeah, and then f- number of points you get for each. Yeah, I gotta figure it out. I don't remember off the top of my head. I don't ballot. think it can end in a tie. That's just what I say. We'll see. Gentle Giraffe, I'm envious of Heronic's beard. I can't grow one. And I swear that's not my burner account. You're growing one for the playoffs. You're trying. Well, I shaved today because there's this uh, Boshford event at Rogers Arena tonight. So I don't want to uh, go up looking scraggly. So I shaved. I, I, I know you can't tell. No <laughs> yeah, you look the exact same. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of Boshford events, didn't even talk about this yet and i'm excited to talk about this we've talked about it before but i'm going to remind you and i'm going to remind you a lot next week so bear with me folks you are going to want to join canucks conversation and the rest of the canucks army crew sakaris price rinkwide vancouver at 1 p.m on saturday april 20th at the hollywood theater in kitsilano for a special tribute to our late friend jason botchford presented by fountain tire bro do your playoffs is a media event celebrating the life and legacy of jason that will feature shared memories special guests an exclusive performance from the matinee and the celebration of vancouver's triumphant return to the playoffs again it is presented by Fountain Tire, make the shift to more savings. Save up to 25% on select tires until April 20th, plus a bonus $50 off any service of $150 or more. Book your appointment at fountaintire.com. Some restrictions apply. As we head further in spring, ask Fountain Tire experts about their seasonal car care package to keep your vehicle in top shape. Find your nearest service dealer at fountaintire.com. Bro, Do Your Playoffs is in support of the BC Mental Health Foundation. Get your tickets now at nationgear.ca while you're picking up one of those one of those beautiful beautiful playoff tees send your playoff tee uh, what can we do what can we do for people that buy a playoff tee and send it to us on twitter we'll put their photo in the show put your photo in the show i'll follow you back on twitter we'll figure something out maybe give them some maybe try to raise the value a little more than that (laughs) (laughs) but go buy your shirt we'll take care of you and just quickly on that event Mm -hmm. i don't know if you guys have seen the guest list but man oh man it's looking pretty good we got People from all different shows in the market. Tony Gallagher is going to be there. The Kat Fochfer. Yeah, it could be the big fight on stage. <laughs> on stage, yeah. I could take Tony Gallagher. I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. Oh, I love Tony yeah. Gallagher. I love Tony Gallagher. And you know what? Uh, maybe I'll save it for the event. Maybe. Well, I get, uh, I'll tell the story. Tony Gallagher was one of the first people that came on to Canucks Convo during the pandemic. And it was like, you couldn't really go out anywhere. I was driving out to Chris's mom's house in White Rock when Chris still lived at home. And we were like huddled around a mic that was stacked on books. And we were sharing the mic. Faber and I were sharing the mic. And Tony was on speakerphone. And it was one mic. Faber and I talk, both talking into it. And then the, the mic on speakerphone right there. And look how far we've come from that setup. But Tony was amazing to talk to. Super gracious with his time. Uh, yeah, can't say enough good things about Tony Gallagher. He was, yeah, absolutely. And apparently we're going to be streaming it too, or there's going to be some video and audio component. That's awesome. And my job is to be the little, uh, run around with a microphone and hand it out for people to ask questions to the panels. Nice. That'll be so fun. I'm going to get in a workout that day. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Tony and quads. Tony and quads. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. (laughs) That one from Jesse C. And on that note, we'll close it out. 
For my co-host, Hartman Dial, and our technical producer, Grady Sass, my name is David Quadrelli. Have a great weekend, folks. Thanks so much for watching another episode of the Canucks Conversation. Canucks Conversation with Harmon and Quads brought to you by the Toyota BZ4X. The BZ4X's fresh look is just an added bonus to its range since you can drive up to 406 kilometers on a single charge. That's enough to get you from Kitsilano to Whistler or Kamloops to Kelowna and back and still be home in time for the game. Now that's what we'd call electric. The best part, by choosing electric, you can get up to $11,000 in rebates and incentives the BZ4X are in stock and selling quickly, so make sure to visit shoptoyota.ca or your local Pacific Toyota dealer to get your hands on one. Canucks Conversation is live Monday through Friday, every weekday at 2 p.m. over on the Canucks Army YouTube channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and interact in the YouTube live chat every day with us, folks.